Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to when Pastor Andy's Wednesday prayer class. And as you've probably quickly already figured out, I am not Pastor Andy. I have way too much hair on my head. Um, my name is Pastor Penny. I oversee family ministries and discipleship around here. And Andy asked me to do the lesson for today. During this time of the COVID-19 pandemic and being stuck at home most of the time, I've been really working on my prayer life. So, And I, I've used a book called How to Pray, A Simple Guide for Normal People by Peter Grieg. And I was really drawn to it because it says it's simple. And I hate when things are made complicated that should be simple. And I think that prayer should, should be easy. It should be something that we look forward to and enjoy doing. And uh, so I just wanted to share with you some three principles that he starts the book out with. And uh, maybe they'll help you. I thought they've helped me to keep praying more often during this time. The first is keep it simple. We're not doing a public speaking thing when we pray. We're not graded on how well we pray or how poorly we are. Um, we don't need to use a lot of complicated words and long extended sentences, like it's a well thought out essay. We just simply talk to God and tell him what's on our mind. In fact, Jesus reminded his disciples about that when he's in chapter six, Matthew chapter 6, telling them not to keep on battling like the pagans because they think they'll be heard because of their many words. But we don't have to be like them because our Father knows what we need before we ask it. So we don't have to keep on and on and saying the same thing. We don't need to be flowery. We just need to talk to God. So keep it simple. The second thing is to keep it real. We can be honest when we talk to God about who we are and what we're feeling or what we've been doing. We don't have to just show him our good side. He knows it all anyway. And he doesn't get mad at us when we admit the truth. It's kind of like parents. I remember one time when our kids were little, I was away and, and our oldest was old enough to watch the other ones. and. So I had been out for an hour or two and I came home and the first thing my son Jonathan said to me was, I broke a window. Now normally, all of my kids would not greet me at the door with, I broke a window. They would have waited for me to discover it and then not really wanted to tell me who had done it. They, either I don't know or somebody else did it. But when he met me at the door with that, I broke the window, I'm sorry. It almost made up for breaking the window, that honesty. And God appreciates honesty in us. Now, I don't know about you, but I need constant reminding about this because I like to show God my good side. And so when in March, when we started having to be socially distant from each other, I didn't like it at all. And it brought in a lot of confusing and frustration and um, just, I don't like this. And that was what I I'd wake up every morning thinking, I don't like this. I miss my people. I miss my friends. I miss you guys. And I, I want to see them and be able to have a real conversation. And I didn't want to tell God that. But I found that as I didn't talk, want to talk to God about that, I didn't want to talk to him about anything. So when we're not real with God, our prayer lives will go down. Fortunately, I'm in a small group, a very small group, just three women. And one of them, we were texting, we meet by texting right now. And one of them was mentioning how much she appreciated the Psalms and how honest the writers of the Psalms were. They told God when they were happy, they told him when they were mad, or when they were angry, when they felt rejected, when they were um, full of grief, when they had sinned. They told God everything. And that reminded me that it's okay to tell God those negative feelings. And since I have been talking to him about them, and yes, it's more than just once because there's, there's, they're still there at times. I find that I'm able to get through this time. I handle it better because I know that God is with me and is helping me. So keep it real with God, even the negative stuff. And finally, you need to keep it up. 
Last week, Pastor Andy was talking about powerful prayer, and one of the points he made was that we need to pray. Just pray. This is that same idea. We need to pray. Whether we feel like it or not, whether we think we're good at praying or bad, whether we have so much to do there isn't time, whether we know what to say or we're fumbling with our words, whether the answers seem to be coming or not, keep praying. Jesus tells a story of a man who had a guest come in the middle of the night, and, so he, and he didn't have anything in the house to feed him. So he goes to his neighbor and he bangs on the door. It's late at night, everybody's in bed, and he's banging on the door saying, I need food, can you give me some bread to feed my guest? And he just keeps it up until finally his friend gets up and gives him the food because he was so persistent in his request. And then Jesus says, he follows this this story up with these words, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. The sense of those verbs is not just ask once and you're done, but ask and keep on asking, seek and keep on seeking, knock and keep on knocking. It's encouraging us to be constant in prayer, to keep it up. And one of the best reasons I know for keeping up with prayer is that we learn to pray by praying. So when we come to prayer, we want to keep it simple. We want to keep it real and we want to keep it up. And I'd like to end with this scripture from Luke chapter 11. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. And he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us, and lead us not into temptation. That's a simple prayer. It's just 34 words. It's easy to understand. It's real. It's real about God, and it's real about us. And if we would pray this when we don't know what to say, it could be the start of something more. During our prayer, we might start praying this and then be able to come into more things that are on our mind. Or it could be our whole prayer for that prayer time. And either way, it's acceptable to God. This prayer can help us keep it up. Would you pray this with me today as we end our time together? Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. Amen. Have a great week, everyone.